Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our soul, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Beneath the peace of your church, where we hide in fear, clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, hello and welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and to serve others. Welcome to everyone joining us for this online worship experience. Starting on the weekend of June 5th and 6th, we will be offering a 5.30 p.m. Saturday evening in-person worship service, and our online worship will be available beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sunday morning as we begin live streaming that service. As we shift to live streaming on Sunday morning, we have more opportunities available for service, not only as members of our welcome team, but also behind the scenes as a sound and video tech if this is a need that you think you can help us fill, please give us a call at our church office, 210-494-8884, or 
or reach out to Chip to set up training. As we look to our summer months, we are getting excited for in-person VBS on June 21st through the 25th. Check your email on Friday or our website for more information and to sign your kids up or to sign up to help volunteer during that week. And finally, this weekend, nine of our young people are affirming their baptism through the rite of confirmation. Please help us lift them up in prayer and support as we walk together with them in our shared baptismal vocation. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. Our first reading is a reading from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let us be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Our second reading is a reading from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Well, hi, friends. How are you today? I have a question for you. I wonder, have you ever been around a group of people and everyone's trying to talk at the same time? It can be hard to hear, can't it, and hard to make sense of what's going on. Maybe with your friends at school or maybe in your family, when everyone's talking, it's a little bit hard to hear. Well, in the story we just heard, we hear about how the Holy Spirit came to the disciples when they were gathered together and everyone started talking at the same time. But you know what? In the middle of all that talking, all the people from all over the world who were there heard God speaking through them. Isn't that cool? And do you know what? The Holy Spirit is with each one of us, too. The Holy Spirit is with you and with me. And that even through us, people can hear God speaking, too. Isn't that cool? So when you go home today, or, or maybe you're sitting in your living room with your family, you can hear God speaking through your family members, and they can hear God speaking through you, too. Isn't that fantastic? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to hear you speaking even when it sounds like everyone's talking at the same time, and help us to listen for your voice and the voice of the people around us. In your name we pray. Amen. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are able to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe me, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. 
Well, what a journey we have been on over the past weeks and months, the festive triumph of Palm Sunday, the tragedy and creeping dread of the three days, the joy of resurrection at Easter, the mysterious appearances of the risen Christ to the disciples, the exaltation and grief of the ascension, and now here we are at Pentecost. To catch us up from where we left off last week with the story of the ascension, following Jesus' ascension into the heavens, the disciples have returned to Jerusalem where they gathered in prayer and chose a replacement disciple for Judas. In today's reading from Acts, the disciples have gathered together for the day of Pentecost, which begs the question, what is Pentecost? When Christians celebrate Pentecost in 2021. We recall the events of this story we just heard in Acts. But the disciples were gathered together on the day of Pentecost as well. So what is Pentecost? The name Pentecost is a Greek word which translates to the 50th day. Not the most exciting description for a festival day. Its origin, however, is in the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy from the Old Testament. Pentecost is the Greek name for a festival day for which the disciples were gathered, named the Festival of Weeks, or Shavuot, which celebrates the conclusion of the seven weeks of the harvest season. Seven weeks is where the 50 days comes from. If it feels strange to be celebrating a harvest festival day in May, well spotted. <laughs> For Christians today, Pentecost marks the end of the seven weeks of the season of Easter and the beginning of the time after Pentecost. For the disciples gathered in our story, however, this particular Pentecost will be a festival unlike any other before, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit enters chaotically onto the scene with the sound of a violent wind, tongues of fire resting on all those gathered, and then everyone speaking all at once in other languages. The onlookers wonder if these Galileans had a little too much to drink. I'd likely have wondered the same had I been witnessing this cacophony. And yet, once again, the Spirit shows that she is not afraid to shake things up to make a bit of a mess. A mess like this will make some of us uncomfortable, myself included. Everyone talking at once sounds like a nightmare to me. And yet, the Spirit does something beautiful with it, as the onlookers from all different nations and languages each hear in their own language these Spirit-filled believers speaking about God's deeds of power. This scene almost feels like a reversal of the ancient story in Genesis of the Tower of Babel, where languages were confused and humanity divided. Now, in this time after Pentecost, the Spirit is drawing together people from every nation, people of different tongues and languages, and they hear about God's deeds of power. I love the description of the church season we're entering, time after Pentecost. Because for me, it's the church season that most accurately locates where we exist in God's great story, living as a church and a people in the time after Pentecost. And in the coming weeks and months, during this time after Pentecost, we're going to be hearing about God's deeds of power as we explore stories of Jesus' life and ministry and what they mean for us as a people living in the time after Pentecost, walking with the Spirit. Because, as our confirmands are affirming today, the same Spirit that filled the disciples gathered together for Pentecost also fills each one of us in our baptism. And what a spectacular baptism this was. This baptism of the Holy Spirit marked the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send power from on high, the fulfillment of John the baptizer's prophecy of a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as Peter points out, 
this promise of God's Spirit, which is fulfilled at Pentecost, also stretches back to the words of the prophets that the Spirit will be poured out on all flesh. I can think of no better time to recall God's faithfulness in fulfilling the promises made to God's people as well as to each one of us as we celebrate the confirmation of our eighth graders this Sunday as they affirm the promises God made to them in their baptism. On, the pen, on this Pentecost, our confirmands and each and every one of us can hear the words of the prophet Joel that Peter recalls to the crowd that your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young people shall see visions and your elders shall dream dreams. Today we celebrate that the Spirit is speaking through these young people as vitally important members of this gathered people. And wow, do we need to listen to the Spirit speaking through the visions and prophecies of our young people, along with the dreams of our elders, more than ever in this time after Pentecost, this era after Pentecost. If we listen, we might even hear in their voices and stories life-giving truths about God's deeds of power. And the Spirit, indeed, speaks through each of us about God's deeds of power, which is why the Church needs the voices of the gathered people. Each and every voice, young voices and old voices, voices from every different sort of background, my voice and your voice, someone will hear the Spirit speaking through you. And you will hear the Spirit speaking through someone else. Someone will experience God's deeds of power through you. It might be chaotic and messy, but it might just be worth the journey. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. <clears throat> Excuse me. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of this earth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, People speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they may exercise your gracious will in the lives of their people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any needs this day. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of love, fill abiding presence with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us up to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise the eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with you. you. Take some time to share God's peace with those around you and text or call someone that you haven't talked to in a while and share God's peace. Donna, peace be with you. Shelby, peace, peace be with you. you. Peace, peace be with, with you. you. Today we recall the Spirit's dramatic entrance into the lives of Jesus' followers, preparing them to share about God's deeds of power to all peoples. The same Spirit prepares us and empowers us to receive God's promises and respond with love and service to people of all nations and languages. When you join your voice with the voices of all gathered through service, leadership, and financial offerings, you empower this community to faithfully navigate this time after Pentecost, guided by the Spirit.
Thank you for your continued generosity. God of love, you call us beloved children. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought forth life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on a desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.